Okay. And okay. Hi, are... Scott. This is Chica Inoue and Scott Morris. How are you doing, Hi, Chica? Everyone. I'm doing well. Good. Good. It's uh, almost, well, it is the holidays, isn't it? It's almost the holidays. It's actually um, in Japan where we have a Labor Day coming up. So oh. um, soon it will be 3D weekend for us. Good. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it's the holidays for me when Starbucks moves to the Red Cup. So <laughs> Starbucks has moved to the Red Cup. That's proof. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that is uh, the sign that the holidays are here. Um, mm -hmm. Although I have to say, um, I've been seeing Christmas trees at the Costco for about a month, which yeah. makes, me, makes me think we're maybe a little carried away here. Yeah, in Japan, they started celebrating Halloween. And I started seeing all the pumpkins and uh, scary witches and all those sort of things um, what, everywhere. Was Halloween not a thing before? No, I think it only started maybe within this past maybe four or five years. Really? And um, now the, have you seen those crosswalks in Tokyo where it's called the scramble intersection? Have you seen those videos where, you know, you know, um, yeah. during yeah. Halloween, there are a bunch of people who are dressed up in, you know, their costumes and on the 31st, you know, there are police everywhere. And um, there's something called a DJ police. <laughs> standing huh. on top of the car like telling everybody you know guiding them um it became a thing and yeah um this past couple couple of years halloween has been pretty big in japan and you know, people I, dressing up i actually now that you mention it i i came across this article probably on twitter or something like that and it was about costumes in japan oh and apparently there's this movement and i i, I was going to forward it to you um but uh you know i didn't and it was a trend where young Japanese people dress up in mundane costumes, um, just like boring. So like one person, you know, just in normal clothes, but they had a table they were carrying with a phone charger and all that. And their costume was person at cafe trying to find plug to charge phone. And uh, somebody else was, you know, waiting in line at grocery store guy. And just oh. like these ridiculous, you know, you know, person at office. I, I don't know, but I thought, man, <laughs> I just said, man, Japan's weird. <laughs> what's, what's, I mean, it's it's they fun, have to have but, they have but, to have some kind of fun because they're you know restrained in this kind of you know conservative society, and they have to get their energy out somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I I know. But, yeah, so I, right after Halloween on the 31st, I started seeing Christmas trees um, and Christmas ornaments uh, here and there. So uh, I was quite surprised. I guess in in, in the United States, there are uh, Thanksgiving ornaments and uh, I guess still the pumpkins are still around. And Wait, Thanksgiving? Yeah. That, that's, they're, they're celebrating pink, uh, uh, pilgrims in Japan? That... No, we, we don't really celebrate thanksgiving but ah. we started seeing um black friday sale isn't that funny so yeah, yeah. well I, I think that's transcended probably thanksgiving just because you know amazon and things like that yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah ryan just commented ha ha mundane costumes <laughs> I'll, i'm gonna find that article i'm gonna i'm gonna email it to you you know it, it's really i don't know i i you know, we we sort of celebrated Halloween over here, and uh, you know, the the three of us too went as characters from Fortnite, and oh. I just didn't dress up at all. And my friend pointed out and said, "Well, there are characters from Fortnite. And you're the guy playing Fortnite." And I'm like, "Perfect, that's my costume." So I'm <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the guy playing Fortnite, and you know, that was my that was my line the whole night. So anyway, it was pretty pretty fun. But mm -hmm. um, you know, hey, welcome everyone. Uh, to uh, what do we we've done this what seven times now eight times yeah now? yeah I think seven times now yeah this is this is one of my two video uh, conference broadcast things that I actually look forward to every week um, no kidding today I was in about six hours of Zoom meetings oh my gosh yeah yeah one lasted from two thirty to five and uh, oh. had another one go from 10 to noon and uh, a few things in between. I got a break and had a couple of phone calls. But, uh, yeah, it's I'm, I'm on official Zoom burnout. 
Yeah, so, that's becoming our norm, isn't it? Being in front of a computer and talking to people from home. Yeah. On your computer. It it's well, it's it's the norm for now. I mean, I, I hope uh I, I hope it's over soon enough and you know, I, I, I definitely miss interacting with people, um, mm -hmm. at, at least, you know, people whose faces I can see because I see people, but I, you know, they're, they're covered. So uh, it's going to be an interesting transition back, I think. Uh, I think everybody's going to be a little bit socially awkward for at least a couple of months. <laughs> like, oh, how, how do we do this? This is weird. You know? Yeah, it's like, definitely. Wait. <laughs> hey, give me a hug. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, well, I... You know what? To me, um, shaking hands was never really been a thing for me. Uh, you know, I, I, I like the Japanese way of bowing <laughs> and, you know, be done with it. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm more of a wave from a distance kind of person. Um, mm -hmm. you know, Just that, stay away uh, from me kind of thing. Yeah. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe a fist bump if I really like you. <laughs> but uh, no, sh shaking hands is entirely too formal. For, yeah, for I don't know if, if that'll still be a thing after Corona. It'll take a while, don't you think? I, I do. And I, I wonder how many things are going to go back to perfectly normal. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of things that are that we're doing now will probably continue to do. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, Zoom meetings instead of in person, things like that. I mean, why waste the gas? Why waste the time? Um, yeah. You, you know, a lot of paper things that we used to use are now digital because you're sharing them with everybody and they're not there with you anymore. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we've been, we've been hip to that for a while. I mean, we haven't been using paper musical scores for, for years now. That's with true. Our, yeah. With our iPad. So yeah, I don't know, May, maybe we'll, we'll see what, what happens, but uh, I, I got to say it's um, we're on lockdown 2.0 here in Southern California. <laughs> um, not, not sure where everybody is, uh, is from out there. But uh, at least, you know, here in Southern California and, you know, some other places where we're experiencing what we experienced in March all over again. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's a little bit depressing, i got to say. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, tr trying, trying to stay motivated um, and practice every day, you know, things like that is, uh, I don't know, I, I, I like to. I mean, I know you're in Japan. You're 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 having a very different experience than, than we are here. Although um, our numbers are going up these days, especially this past week. Um, Maybe is yeah. it the weather by any chance? You think? Well, yeah. Well, the weather is great right now, and everybody wants to get out, and um, you know they want to go sightsee because the mountains and the scenery is beautiful, and uh, this is the season to travel. You know, right? So, right. and and there and the Japanese government have this thing called the Go to Travel uh, campaign, um, which they're you know giving certain percentages uh, when people travel. Oh, so, they're, encur they're encouraging travel. Yeah, they're encouraging trouble, tr trouble, travel. <laughs> there was there was a Freudian slip if I ever heard one. <laughs> oh God, talking talking Japanese for long, I guess. <laughs> So we've got um, we've got Ryan here. Ryan likes our mundane costumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hi. Christian, it's hey, not hi. so depressing. You've got plenty of time to practice now, Christian. <laughs> and, uh, and James Hancock just said hello, Chica from Australia. Hi, James. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're all doing well. Um, so today it's a very open discussion, aren't we, Scott? Yeah, we just thought, uh, you know, what the heck? Let's let's because you know. It's difficult sometimes to get uh, the people out there involved in, in the conversation. And, you know, maybe it has to do with the fact that we've been sort of controlling the topics and things like that. So we thought, well, you know, let's just see what would happen if we just didn't have a topic. Um, you know, I mean, you know, we prefer to stay on music, um, but, you know, definitely the rules would have to be no politics, no religion, and no Baroque ornamentation discussions, because all three of those lead to serious fighting. But uh, <laughs> Chica should play some saxophone for us. That you know <laughs> that that makes my job really easy. So Chica can just play, and <laughs> I'll I'll turn mute on, and you know, sure, <laughs> I'll be I'll I'll be good. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, but uh, no, it, it, you know, please feel free. Just post, uh, you know, Improv. some topic, a comment, whatever you like. Um, into the into the chat there. Keep it clean, people. Keep it clean. But um, yeah, we'll just see where this goes. It's uh, it's uh, 
uh, it's unstructured today. How about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I do want to know, Scott, what have you been up to with your music? Well, I've been uh, working in a finale to clean up some uh, guitar and saxophone scores. Yes. Yeah, I know. I, I've been... <laughs> I, I'm not usually a procrastinator, people, but um, it's just there's been something about not wanting to just do a deep dive into finale again um, that uh, I've been procrastinating, and and I finally got over that. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm cleaning up uh, a number of scores that are on the record and some some Spanish arrangements, things like that. Uh, so that's that's all that. Um, yeah, I've you know it's been it's been kind of up and down as far as daily practice goes. You know, some days I just find myself playing all day long and other days it's just like, mm, and I, you know, I've got this rule with myself that I've, I've mentioned before. Uh, so those of you who've been here before probably heard it, but I, I, I have a 15 minute rule, which is, you know, on a day when it's like, I just really don't feel like playing. I, I force myself to play for 15 minutes. And um, I, I I have yet to only play for 15 minutes. It, once I kind of get going, then I, I you know usually end up at least an hour, 90 minutes, something like that. And I can live with that. That's uh, that's pretty good. But um, yeah, I've actually been dusting off some old pieces. Um, mm. Asturias uh, has been the, the the main one lately. Yeah. So our next project is going to be Asturias. Yeah, we're still working on it. Um, it's such a guitar, well, originally for piano, but it's such a guitar heavy piece. Um, and we've been having such a difficult time finding the right voice for me to play. So yeah, we're, we're still working on that. And I'm, I'm glad um, you're in the works of that. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I was kind of inspired, you know, I, I uh, moderated um, three weeks, four weeks of Pepe Romero virtual master classes that uh, wrapped up last month. And that was for, for CSU Summer Arts. And um, somebody played Asturias and Pepe was talking about the, the you know, how really the title Asturias, which is of course a city in Northwest Spain. It's, you know, right on the border of, of well, really close to France actually. Uh, by the way, our, our friend Pepe Vigil, the guitar builder is from Asturias, mm -hmm. lives in Granada, but he's from Asturias. Um, and uh, how it was really just given by the publisher it had nothing to do with the piece, but the music is much more Andalusian. So, mm. you know, I can just play that and you can learn some flamenco dance moves. Um, so, you know, that we'll just Me? do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> right. <laughs> you're, you're a quick study. Car Carissa will show you. You'll be fine. Um, yeah. So, and okay, so, you well, know. Mm -hmm learning music, uh, working on arrangements. And I've, I'm also updating my website um, for Classical Guitar Complete, which is my, my method book, uh, which has been out since 2012. It's actually been out for eight years, but uh, it's been uh, really uh, selling well, thanks mostly to uh, Guitar Salon International. But um, I've been getting emails and things for years from people who are fans of uh, volume one and two and the series of videos I did over at GSI. Um, to write a volume three, and um, I've actually started outlining a volume three. So, um, yeah, might have another classical guitar complete volume, or at least like a practice, you know, manual or something related to it mm -hmm. in the in the near future. But mm -hmm. um, other yeah. than that, I'm just playing tennis and getting sunburned. What are you up to? Me? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> well, I, I was reading the comments too, and. Um, James has asked, uh, how did I start on the saxophone? So I, I think I mentioned it in a couple of different platforms, but I started because I wanted to be in the marching band. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was 13. I was 13 when I came to the United States and I wanted to immerse myself in American culture. So um, I yeah, started, got started with a marching band in my high school, like end of middle school, high school. And... Yeah, um, the reason on why I picked the saxophone, um, my t I think I went to the band. I, I started the band on Friday, and the teacher was like, oh, you know what, pick an instrument by Monday, okay? And that's all. <laughs> there wasn't any, like, you know, trying this instrument or that instrument. Mm -hmm. But he just said, you know, pick an instrument, any instrument you want to play. That's, that's funny. Would, same for me, seventh grade band played saxophone. Yeah. 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 Same. 
Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm going to play that really cool looking shiny instrument, which was the saxophone. And that's how all, it all started. I didn't really take um, classical saxophone lessons until much later, until college. But uh, yeah, uh, so that's how I started the saxophone. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I, the, the reason why I never got into jazz was because it, it was never really my voice. I was a classical pianist starting when I was four or five, and I played classical music since then. So, yeah, it's, it's, I, I really consider jazz as a completely different language. Like, oh, and, it is. Yeah, yeah. So, it is. Yeah, I, I tried my hand at, at uh, well, I never really real jazz, but I was the, classical guitarist who got into rock guitar who got into um what we called neoclassical guitar which was i was mm -hmm. basically trying to play paganini caprices on on a on a guitar mm. and then ended up at git in hollywood and fancied myself a fusion guitar player for about a year and a half and uh, mm. then i realized i was not <laughs> um <laughs> but it, yeah. it, it, it's 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 harder than it looks folks i think um, scott and i we, we both have been in the situation where we had to play um like in other genres besides classical i was in jazz band i was in big band i played in latin jazz band you know but yeah, it, it was the sake of me immersing myself in that music. Oh, but I really enjoyed playing in a Balkan ensemble when, when I was at UCLA. Huh. Um, yeah, so uh, East European, you know, the Bulgarian music, that's what I was really into. And I still listen to uh, a lot of East European music, um, like uh, Bulgarian Women's Choir. What uh, is that? What's that? What's that band that you introduced me to? We were in Arizona, driving <laughs> from Tucson to Scottsdale, and you were like, "You're gonna, you got to hear this," and you put it on. Yeah. I'm like, "Oh my god, that is cool!" What, what yeah, I was listening. Well, we listened to um, Daka Braka. That's it. Yeah, That's it. that is yeah. crazy music. That is crazy, crazy music. Yeah, that cover, they're awesome. Uh, the first time I saw them was at Disney Hall. You'll be surprised. It was hmm. combined concert with uh, National Bulgarian Women's Choir and the Daka Braka um, at the Walt well, Disney Hall in Los Angeles. And I was like, oh, my God. I mean, hearing them live was so exciting. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, it's like yeah. it's, it's like Eastern European flamenco madness or something. Mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, they use all kinds of folk instruments, um, and th there are three women and one man, and the th three ladies sing in sort of a Bulgarian woman's choir that like quarter tone, mm -hmm. interesting pitches. Yeah, that's what that's what reminded me of flamenco was the way they bend the voice and that's things true. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ryan, Ryan's asking, how hard is this StreamYard platform to set up and use? Um, it's it's easy enough that I did it tonight. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, for the past maybe five episodes, six episodes, I was hosting it, but my internet has been sort of unstable, so I handed it over to Scott, and you took it over fine. I, I, I did it. I did it without any any questions being asked. Um, yeah, basically, you just go onto the, the site. It's free. You don't even need to create a password. Um, you put in your email address and they send you a six digit uh, uh, sort of pin number to your phone. You enter that in and that's your temporary password. Yeah. Then you simply connect whatever platform you want to use. For us, it's Facebook, but you could use YouTube. You could use whatever you want. Yeah, but you can Downside, only, for, yeah for the only free one. version. For the free yeah. version, you can only stream it to one platform. Right, right. Yeah, and you could, you'll, you'll get this, this <laughs> sign up here. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you you can you can pay for the pro and the the little logo goes away, and you could stream to multiple platforms. So you could be streaming to, you know, I didn't really look, but I'm assuming you know Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, you know, wherever. Um, mm -hmm. So th that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, there, but there yeah, other, it's it's easy. Yeah, there are other platforms that does very similar to what we're using. Um, but the pro version usually lets you do so many kinds of things. You can, you know, flip the image. You can, um, you know, do interesting things with the, you know, the pictures. Yeah. So. Well, I think well, our we, pictures are perfectly interesting. 
<laughs> yeah, so Ryan asking us, um, as a classical guitarist, you have virtuosic technique and solid tone. Would you say the difference in playing jazz is a matter of learning, um, voicing work, and harmony? Uh, well, yeah. Um, it, it, you know, jazz is definitely a more fluid um you know musical language than than classical but you know just just one one thing that i hear from people who don't play classical music a lot is that classical music doesn't have improvisation in it um you know this actually came up in those pepe romero master classes that i i mentioned a moment ago um a student asked him about improvisation and pepe said i improvise every day and he said, you know, performing a classical piece is also a type of improvisation because you never do it the same way twice. Um, it, it's a different type of improvisation than like, you know, free jazz, like really making things up on the spot. Um, but, uh, you know I, know, I know enough about, you know, playing jazz, having worked in groups with Julian Coriel and, you know, Cheek and I have some great friends like Teodros Avery, whose who's new record, Thelonious Monk record is uh, on the jazz charts right now, doing really, really well, um, that those improvised solos are, are, you know, often, I'm not going to say worked out. Chick Corea said it was like 40% improvisation, um, you know, but, you know, kind of work out lines and things like that. But then you have to, if you hear something happen, you've got to adapt to it. Your ears are really, really important. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the one thing that, that freaked me out about jazz and, and uh, you know, kind of told me to stay in, stay in your lane, you know, classical guitars is more for you, um, was how important uh, working on harmony was um, if you ever want to be truly horrified, check out the the the, the books by Ted Green, and uh, oh man, it's it's just you know well first you just have to memorize a gazillion chords, and uh, all the different voicings and this and that and you know and then what you can play on each of those and man it gets complicated. I'd I'd argue that it's it's more jazz theory and harmony is at least as complicated if not way more complicated than classical harmony. Um, you know, at least the traditional classical, um, you know, theory that that we're taught, which mostly focuses on you know 18th century voice leading and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I I don't know. I, I'm not going to say one's harder than the other. I would say I respect both very much, and I put all my time into into the classical. Yeah. But, well, yeah. that's why I say it's like a language. You know, you just because you studied. Um, one language from a book or from a teacher, you can actually acquire it. You have to live in the culture and you have to immerse yourself in that. And it takes like a lifelong, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it takes forever <laughs> actually yeah. to actually ex acquire something. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'd say it's harder than language because, you know, I, I know plenty of people who are legitimately, you know, bilingual, trilingual um you know so, some people i know um elliot fisk i think he speaks six or seven languages something like that and i, I don't just mean like gets by in them he's he's completely fluent and almost no accent whatsoever um elliot was doing a master class for my students back in 07 or 08 when i hosted the gfa um at my university and my student who went to pick him up um was in the car from LAX with him and asked, uh, Elliot said, oh, that's an interesting last name. What is it? And he said, uh, Swedish. He goes, oh, okay, I think I got that. And he just spoke fluent Swedish um, with him the entire ride back to campus. So some people are able to do um, you know, multiple, but lots of people are bilingual. Um, I'd say no exaggeration, more of my friends are bilingual than not. Musically bilingual is really rare. I'm trying to think of the number of people um, who legitimately, um, who legitimately play classical and jazz equally well. And, you know, I know it's a smaller pool, which is probably why there are fewer people than, you know, bilingual people out there, but, you know, gosh, you know, uh, Andrew York is a brilliant classical player and, uh, a great improviser as well. And somebody else that I work with, uh, Matt Greif, from LA Guitar Quartet. Um, he's just as comfortable playing jazz or, you know, 
whatever is as classical but uh man those are few and far between i, I don't know mm. too many mm. yeah christian christian right right on cue matt greif he said <laughs> definitely <laughs> and 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 legitimately you know professional level in both mm. professional level in both so yeah those those guys are those guys are rare and i, yeah, I don't yeah. i don't consider myself um close to any of that yeah Oh, no, oh, and, no. And, uh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, unless you consider classical and speed metal being fluent in two languages, does that <laughs> does that count? <laughs> speed metal. No, okay. I don't. I don't. I don't even know exactly what that is. <laughs> I sent you a video once, and you just said, "What the f is this?" And I, I just gave up. <laughs> I think you try to play um, the, that kind of music. When when we were driving from Arizona, uh, Tucson to Phoenix or something, uh, maybe I don't know. I I'd, <laughs> it, it, I I'd, I'd have to ease you into it. You can't just like jump straight into the intense stuff. I don't know. Got to got to bring you in, you know, with some gateway music. I'll, I'll figure it out. But even then, um, the foundation could be like blues or something, right? Like I I don't know. I I don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, you know, one of the one of the things that uh, you know I did in my beginning guitar class was you know we actually started once we could play some chords, uh, we learned a uh, twelve bar blues. Yeah, it's a it's a great place. Everybody can just sort of meet there. Um, ah, Ryan's asking, what are your musical goals for the next few years, Chica? Ah, thanks, Ryan, for asking. Well, I have a couple concerts coming up. Uh, until this year, well, until the end of the year. Actually, I have a concert this coming Monday with a piano and contrabass and saxophone and trio. <laughs> and uh, this contrabass player, she's in um, an orchestra in Osaka. And uh, she plays a lot of uh, like a cello repertoire too. Mm. So, and I play, you know, I could jump in playing like the clarinet part or something like that so we did a concert in summer uh, playing the brahms trio mm -hmm. um and no was it brahms no it was beethoven trio and this time we're going to attempt doing uh foray's trio so the, yeah we know pavan no 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 it's oh. the the trio piano trio oh, okay gotcha yeah Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm still continuing to do transcriptions. Um, I'm hoping that I can get my music um, published sometime soon. Um, and actually, these days I found, uh, found out about Haydn's violin sonata. Hmm. And I have, a, I have a brilliant pianist who I work with here. And um, we discovered... The, oh, throughout uh, summertime through since I've been back in Japan we've been working on all the transcriptions from you know Beethoven and Mozart and all those pieces and we were thinking like what should we do next and as we were looking for music we found Haydn's violin sonata which is not really well known because he never wrote a, a violin sonata it's actually somebody who may have or we don't even know if Haydn did it himself oh yeah, yeah so uh, the first piece we played was his um, G major violin sonata, which was originally a piano sonata, but the mm. cello part was taken, taken, you know, it was gone. And it was just the violin and the piano part. And oh my goodness, there's just so much color to the music and so many, so many layers to the music. So we we decided to do all sets of eight of them that is in Peter's edition. So I think we're going to do all the all the transcriptions for the saxophone and piano for the quote unquote violin sonata. Oh. And uh, I, I kind of want to name it as a saxophone sonata because no one really claimed it. <laughs> so mm. Haydn saxophone sonata, maybe. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's a little. Well, but no one really claimed it. It's it's all to say, you know. <laughs> yeah, you might as well say you wrote it too, right? Yeah, right. Well, yeah. I won't say that. No, 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 no. But it's it's a great <laughs> sonata, and hopefully, I can um, publish that and uh, release a video or something, or maybe even CD um, in the next maybe year or so. So that's my project right now. Cool. Mm. Cool. Something tells me you're gonna have me arranging the 
piano part for guitar at some point. Um, <laughs> so David is asking, uh, Scott, when, when was the last time you played an electric guitar? Oh, wow. uh, <laughs> um, I, I actually, I sold all of my electric guitars. Really? Except for the, well, except for the, the, the one, the, the first good electric guitar that I got, which was a Guild when I was, you know, 10-ish or nine or something like that. I kept that just because it was my first real electric guitar. I'd only had acoustic guitars before that. Um, and I don't play that one at all. But I, I did have, I'm trying to remember what the what the reason was. Um, I, I can't remember if it was just, you know, childhood friends who wanted to get together and play or um, if it was a reunion of one of my bands. I really don't remember. But uh, something, something, in, you know, nudged me to go pick up a, a uh, another proper sort of contemporary electric guitar, and uh, I I called up my buddy Julian Coriel, who some of you guys may know. He's uh, his father's Larry Coriel, the fusion guitarist, and mm -hmm. he tours with Alanis Morissette and Blood, Sweat, and Tears, things like that. Great solo guitar player as well, but. Um, I said, hey, man, you got a guitar to sell? And he said, yep. And uh, he was actually playing with uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears at uh, the Canyon Club, which isn't far from my house. He was sound checking over there. So my son and I went over to sound check and uh, walked in, and they were up on stage uh, sound checking. And he brought my guitar out to me, and it was a, uh, a Schecter Hellraiser with uh, skull and crossbone inlays in the fretboard. And I thought, okay, this is cool. Um, and uh, I picked, I, play, I, I got that guitar, I don't know, two years ago, something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I probably play it once a week, something like that. And it, I, my buddy, Michael Peters, Mike Peters, the guitar builder, uh, was uh, teching for Jeff Beck for a number of years. And uh, at the end of the tour, uh, Jeff Beck's uh, amplifier uh, for the bus where he would practice uh, driving from uh, town to town. Uh, Mike sold that to me for just a couple hundred bucks. So oh. I've got uh, Julian Coriel's uh, Schecter and Jeff Beck's amp here. So it's pretty good pedigree there. Wow. I, wish I, could, I wish I could do it justice, but I can't. So <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, I pull it out every once in a while. Maybe you should record something so we can play it on um, this live chat sometimes. Yeah, I yeah, I you know, I I uh it, it's funny how how quickly things go away when you haven't played um mm. seriously, but I, I I haven't played electric guitar seriously since the early 1990s. Wow. Yeah. So, cool. that's that, that's a lifetime. You know, really truly. Mm. But you do have an electric acoustic guitar, do you? I do. Yeah, I've got yeah. I've got several. Um I've got you know four or five um you know electric guitars with pickups in them but yeah. uh yeah but yeah. like a solid body electric you know jazz or rock guitar mm. um i've only got one no well two the old one that i had but. do you ever using those electric acoustic guitar with the saxophone i don't like them um i mean it, you know if somebody was going to pay us a million dollars to play a wedding or something <laughs> like that i would but um <laughs> it, it, I, they, the problem with those is they sound amplified. It, it doesn't mm -hmm. sound like a, like a really loud acoustic guitar. It sounds like an amplified acoustic guitar, which, you know, uh, you know, we talked about this on one I of the I like previous. amplified acoustic guitar. <laughs> <laughs> we want the guitar to sound nice and loud without sounding artificial. You know, a nice big I get it, I loud. Get it. I'm just, I'm just, I know. Well, yeah. yeah. So Chick and I have a lot of years of trying to figure out how to get the guitar louder, and uh, I've I've been through three, four, five different you know gear setup type things here. And, also, and only, um, only figured it out last year actually. Also, dress rehearsal rehearsal with nobody in stage on stage, uh, nobody in the audience. And when the audience comes and when we play, it sound sound is so different. So in dress rehearsal, your amplifier sounds great, your microphone is great, but once we have all those bodies in the audience, it feels yeah. like the sound is dead, and I I feel like I'm not covered in. That like, that's when you gotta you gotta turn it up in the three or four more three or four more yeah. notches. Yeah, yeah, yeah cause yeah. The, the bodies absorb the sound, so you just gotta mm -hmm. be louder then. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you, you you get one of those you know acoustic electrics 
plugged in, you know, either an amplifier or if you're just going DI into the hall and I don't know, I'm just starts sounding like gypsy kings or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just is not not legit. Um oh yeah, Ryan's asking uh where where you practice there in Japan. Um he says I know space is limited and neighbors get irritable. <laughs> well, I, I'm very yeah. Go ahead. I was just gonna say Chica doesn't care about you know playing loud and bothering <laughs> anybody. <laughs> Although I play quite quiet now because I, I've been playing with a guitar player. Oh, I learned, I, I learned how to play quiet. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Ryan, um, I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm, I'm in a house and um, our neighbors are not that close. So, um, yeah, I, I play at an hour that's not annoying. Like, you know, I don't play after maybe nine or something like that in the evening. But during the day, I think it's fine. I've never really had any complaints. I'm very lucky I get to practice at home. Yeah. No, yeah. It, is, it is loud. When, when, we were in, when we were shooting the Granada video um, on Pepe Romero's roof in, <laughs> in, in Granada, Spain, yeah, that should be the story, but it's not. Um, a Japanese sort of tourism guy that we'd met, you know, not what a week or two before, something like that. Um, we didn't even know he lived in that area of Sacramento. But uh, didn't you get a text or something from him? Like we heard saxophone at the yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that you? Yeah. And you're like, yes. <laughs> Oh, we weren't even playing. I think we were no, just we were. testing we, our. Well, no, we were no, playing, no. We, we, but we're, we, of course, I was testing out the sound. But. I mean, I was. I, I was. I was, because you know, I, I, if I'm not physically moving the strings in the video, it's you know, you're clearly not playing. Sure. Um, I mean, you can see the strings vibrating. So yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta play. And somebody out there just like, wait, they're not playing live on Pepe Group. <laughs> Believe it or not, even though it's it's the maestro's house, the acoustics are not great on the roof. Yeah, so, yeah. So not, we not actually a, not a control. Recorded, yeah, we recorded the the sound in um, Studio City, which is in Holly, near Hollywood in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. At Studio City Sound. Yeah, I wonder what Tom is doing lately. Uh, I don't know. Um, it yeah. seems it seems like they're very active on Facebook, but yeah, um, or on Instagram rather. But uh, they yeah. are all wearing masks, but they are also in a very small space, and uh, masks have to come off to sing or mm -hmm. blow a blow an instrument. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, for, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know how they're doing it. Everybody's right. got it. But even in LA, I live in an apartment um, in the Hollywood Hills, but I've never really got a complaint <laughs> from my neighbors. <laughs> So I yeah. guess I've been lucky with my neighbors who don't complain about. No, it's yeah, it's funny. I I I bumped into my neighbor um, a week or two ago. Um, you know, everybody's so happy to see somebody. It's like, hey, you know, and you're staying six feet apart on the sidewalk. But uh, hey, Rob T Bone's here. Hey, we were just talking about someone you know, Rob. You just mentioned Mike P a minute ago. Oh. Um, yeah, Rob's uh, down in Hermosa close to where I used to live in Redondo beach. And, uh, we had some, we had some fun down there from what I can remember from some of those nights. Most of it, I can't, but, uh, yeah, good, good, uh, good hangs in Hermosa. Um, but, uh, yeah, I ran into my neighbor and, and she's like, you know, your son is he playing the saxophone. I'm like, yeah. She's like, well, he's sounding really good. You know, he's learned four or five little tunes, things like that. And he practices his scales and his thirds and all of that. And, She's like, yeah, it's nice. I just sit in my backyard and I listen. And I was like, oh, okay. I was worried, you know, it was bothering, you know, people. And uh, and then I said, oh, well, sorry about the guitar. And she's like, never heard it. And like, you know, <laughs> wait a minute. You know, I, I, I'll sit in my living room with the back door open playing guitar very loud. And apparently the neighbors can't even hear it. So, you know. yeah. Yeah. I, I was always net envious um, at USC. Um you know, all these guitar guitar majors, they're just sitting outside and practicing, and I can't even hear anything. <laughs> we are a delicate little instrument, okay? It's the, that's, what, that's what the appeal is. You know? No one wants to hear saxophone outside, you know, sitting on the rock and playing. Although in Japan, we, I see a lot of people practicing right by the river because that's, you know, 
it's an open air and people can yeah. make sound. So yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's that's what you know. I'm <laughs> telling telling students at the university who can't get into the practice rooms right now, just go go to the park. You know, if you can't play in your house, go to the park. You know, open your case. I mean, hell, maybe you'll make a couple bucks. <laughs> so go by and throw some money in your case. It's yeah, right. indistinguishable from busking. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, it it it. One of the nice things about the guitar and one of the curses about the guitar is that it is quiet. Mm -hmm. But uh, so you know, I I can and it, and then you can make it even more quiet uh, by putting something under the strings and it creates like a, a mute. So you know, you'll take like a sponge or a sock or a cloth or something like that, put it under the strings, yeah. and it, it, I could you know, be living in an apartment with the thinnest walls in the world, practicing at three in the morning on a weekday and nobody's going to knock on the door and complain. So Dave, David says gentleman's instruments. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's also a, a drunken tavern instrument, but. Uh, <laughs> then what's saxophone? What is saxophone? I don't know. <laughs> Any ideas? What, what, yeah, what? if anybody knows. Um, yeah, well, I, I, I have no I, opinion. Not that I'm willing to share publicly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of um, female saxophonists lately, though. I don't know why I've never been really been a um, um, instrument that's you know that, that the woman played, but you know, yeah. we we always talk about how guitar and saxophone are sort of, I don't know if you could say they're outsider instruments, but in the, in the classical world, they kind of are. Um, and, you know, in Europe, um, you know, my first time going to Europe to, to study guitar, uh, I was really surprised. This was maybe 91-ish, something like that, 1990, 91, um, in Salzburg. And I was so shocked to see that like, you know, 40, almost 50% of the people in the class were female um, because, you know, back in the States where I was at USC, there were 25 guitar students. There was one uh, female guitar player, one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, now if you head back to that very same program, um, it's in that 30, 40% range, just, just mm -hmm. like it was, you know, back in the early nineties in Europe and it hasn't changed in Europe. Um, you know, I've been to Asia a bunch of times, China, um, in particular, um, several times, uh, taught at the conservatory in Beijing and, you know, played some, some, uh, concerts, met a lot of players. And I swear it's half, it's half female, maybe more female mm -hmm. players in China. So, yeah. Um, my point is, it, it always sort of seems like guitar in the classical world just seems to be, you know, a couple of decades ahead of where classical saxophone is. And I think now you're seeing those, you know, female players in the classical saxophone um, mm -hmm. the same way, you know, we're starting to see them in, in, in guitar in the last well, not just Well, not just classical saxophone, but even in jazz. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's true as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I actually find it really, I don't know, I, I'm sure you feel more strongly about this than I do, but I, I kind of hate going on Instagram and, you know, you see these, you know, you know, female guitar players and everybody's like, wow, she's really good for a girl. And it's like, <laughs> oh, piss off with that. Really? They really say that? They absolutely do. Or, wow. or they, they comment on their appearance more than they're playing. Um, there's even an Instagram handle um, called uh, creepy guitar comments, and all mm. they do is post creepy comments from guys <laughs> about uh, uh, female guitar players on on uh, YouTube, and mm. uh, you know it's like I, I'm not even going to repeat some of the stuff. It's it's just it's so creepy. It's really well, at least they get more viewings, I, I guess, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess you know it's a. Uh, you know, a friend of mine who, you know, I, I've done a lot of videos for GSI and I was talking to a, a friend of mine who's female who's done some videos for GSI. And, you know, she's like, Man, you're so lucky. It's like they, they, they don't comment on your earrings or your hair or what you're wearing. You know, I mean, somebody once made fun of my sunburn and that's as personal as it got about my appearance. Um, but, uh, but, but don't women want to get complimented on those things anyway? <laughs> otherwise, why, otherwise, why would they wear those earrings and, you know, wear pretty clothes? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm not commenting. This is being recorded. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, we're getting a little. Yeah, we have to be stay PC here, right? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just not saying anything. I'm just saying that uh, you know any anybody who thinks girls can't play as well as guys is uh, not paying attention. And yeah, that's uh, not true. Image is a personal choice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Definitely. So, yeah. Well, David yeah. says saxophone is a scholar's instrument. Do you agree on that? Scholar's instrument. I, I, I think I know what he might mean by that. Um, you know, Chica, we, you know, we've talked in the classical world about where most of the saxophonists are, and they do seem to be at universities. And, you know, mm -hmm. the, the big programs tend to be at universities. And, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, saxophone, you know, in the, in the rock and jazz worlds, you know, that's a totally different thing, you know, um, you know, Bird and Coltrane, you know, Clarence Clemens, you know, people like that. Um, I suppose they're all gentlemen, but, uh, you know, the, yeah, the, the, the scholars thing, I, I don't know, maybe it's, it's just that it's so associated with, with institutions of higher learning possibly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and every, and this is true in classical guitar as well, but, you know, it seems like every professional classical um, a saxophonist is associated with a with a university. Um, well, but then again, classical, the, do you do you think classical music in general is sort of attached to the academia? I, I do, I, and and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, classical music is is one of those things that really does need to be, in my opinion, studied. And you know. I, I, I'm sure somebody can cite somebody who's self-taught, who's gotten to, you know, a, a, a really high level in classical music. I'd, I'd also probably, you know, be right in suggesting that, you know, those, those were probably early 20th century players, things like that. These days, you know, if you want to be a high level classical player, you know, get a job with an orchestra or, you know, be a touring uh, musician, um, it, it would be almost impossible, I think, to just sort of figure that out on your own. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's so many great, great uh, players who are at great institutions. Um, why wouldn't you want to go and, and study with them? Um, you know, something like rock guitar, that's becoming more institutionalized than, than it was. You know, they've got a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, music schools out there, universities offering, you know, commercial or contemporary music degrees, you know, things like that. It used to only be a couple, you know, Berkeley and, you know, GIT, you know, places like that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, they, you know, they, all, they found out that they can, you know, um, make business out of that. Absolutely. And I, I, I think it's actually a Japanese billionaire who owns <laughs> Musicians Institute in Hollywood, actually. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly some of the greatest rock guitar players are completely self taught. You know, I mean, they, you know, maybe you know, had a couple of lessons here or there, but they figured most of it out themselves. That's a lot harder to do if you're trying to play, you know, classical music um, because it, it is such a long history. And, you know, even, you know, back in the, you know, hundreds of years ago, it was, you know, you, you had a teacher, you know, um, it, it always worked that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's what classical is, you know, I mean, most people don't figure that out themselves. So yeah, no, no shame in that. And, you know, also, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, sharing what you know with the next generation of musicians. I think that's incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And uh, and hell, if you're going to get uh, health benefits and, you know, a regular paycheck out of it too, so much the better. <laughs> you mean as a faculty? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? That's, that's true. Yeah. No, buddy, a buddy of mine said a university teaching gig is like the new record deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought, I thought that was great. I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, David is also saying he taught way more female students than I have male guitar standard in my teaching career. So, oh. Oh. Well, maybe you're just really charming and you just attract, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe so. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, yeah. You never know what the motivation is there. But uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. Actually, now, you know, that, that, touring is sort of off the table for, for the most part, um, you know, to have regular teaching is uh, fantastic. You know, it's, it's absolutely fantastic, you know, that, mm -hmm. that uh, you know, so many people are able to, 
you know, continue to make some, some money. Um, even, even though they can't get out there. Although I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day, i um, not going to say who it is cause it's, it's, you know, money related and I, you know, would never out someone for that, but, uh, he, he had a big tour canceled. He's mm-hmm. not even the, the head artist. He's, he's, uh, he's a touring band member. Mm-hmm. And I said, uh, I said, how much money did you lose this year? And he said, $200,000. Mm-hmm. It's like, Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. yeah, yeah $200,000 yeah. is what he lost. Yeah. Well, yeah. Crazy. I mean, he was going to be on the road all year, but he lost right. $200,000. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's, uh, yeah, <laughs> Make, making that up with weekly private lessons isn't exactly mm-hmm. making that feel better. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, speaking of the touring, I mean, it, it, good news this week about uh, you know a couple of companies, Pfizer and Moderna, with a very promising vaccine that mm-hmm. they're you know I, I heard they're going to start rolling out to frontline workers mm-hmm. as early as uh, late December, and you know uh, other people could be maybe getting it by you know early summer late spring next year or something like that how, how how soon do you think and i know you're not you know an, an epidemiologist there chica but uh you know how, how soon do you think uh we can get back to normal and uh get out there and play because uh i i saw that news 95 percent effective and i just went oh please be true please be true yeah i don't know because they say it's 95% effective. Is that well, they, really true? Well, they have to prove it. So we'll see. And it's- they, I think the virus has also mutated by now and it's going to keep mutating. So how effective is it going to be by the time we get the virus? You know, there's, there might be some other um, traits of coronavirus that might be going around that it's not, a, you know, the virus, the, the vaccine won't work. So, right. Yeah, we, we, we really don't know. And, you know, what you said 40%, 50, as long as 40% of the people have vaccine. Things yeah, well, that, sort that, of. That, that's about what, you know, like the flu vaccine, you know, just mm-hmm. less than half of uh, people in America mm-hmm. actually get the vaccine. But, you know, mm-hmm. that's, that's enough to, you know, bring those numbers down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and those yeah. those who prefer to get the flu, fine, get the flu. Um, but uh, you know, at least I'll be safe if I get the vaccine. Or and even if you do get the, you know, end up catching the virus and you got the vaccine, the yeah. the symptoms are less yeah. because you've you've had you've been exposed to the the, mm-hmm. the antibody. Yeah. You've had the antibody flux. So I, I don't know. I, I just I, I just really want to believe um, that uh, you know this well, means see, uh, it's hard to believe what's on the media these days. So I don't want to be too, you know, hopeful about it. I, I mean, it's it's a great news, believe me. But I, I just really don't know whether their numbers are really correct with what they're saying. Well, like I said, they'll have to prove it. You know, I'm from a medical family. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there'll be some serious studies, serious scrutiny. Um, there'll be, you know, peer review articles in JAMA and, you know, things like that. Um, yeah, it'll, it, they, they won't be able to fake that. It won't be an opinion. They'll, they'll, they won't do it until they're sure. So yeah, I'll, I'll trust the science once that comes out, but mm-hmm. assuming that is true, that could be really good news. So, you know, we could be back on a plane to Europe in, uh, in July, which is, uh, we'll you know, see. My, we'll my, see. My, my I, I, I just hope 2021, um, we, we can solve things by 2021, but. The fact that Spanish flu back in the days, what hundred years ago, it took them about four or five years to for everything to get resolved. Of course, yeah. the, the you know today the technology and the um, the the medical it's it's so advanced now compared to hundred years ago. But still, people are moving much quicker and uh, traveling to you know much further places. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I want to be I want to be as hopeful as you are, but I I, I just really can't say anything. <laughs> I don't, I don't well, you know. just said a lot, and now I'm all depressed. This, this isn't <laughs> this isn't why we come here every week. <laughs> but <sighs> I, you know, but but I'll I'll be back in um, the United States by March for sure. So hopefully we can get some recording um, recording done and a couple project together. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. while we can actually, you know be together and do get some work done. Yeah. So I'm really hopeful about yeah. that. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. We've got something yeah. to look forward to. But, uh, <laughs> now I'm, I'm, 
I'm going to Europe next or, summer. Or if LA is really terrible in February or March, maybe we can meet in Hawaii. I just, it's so funny. <laughs> I was just about to say we'll meet in Hawaii. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've got some. Yeah. I've got some uh, friends over there. I'll call Jeff Peterson or somebody and say, "Hey, man, where can we record?" And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we should do it in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, never a terrible idea. Yeah, well, it's yeah, it's, it's a it's a halfway for me. It's, ha it's halfway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's halfway. Yeah, yeah. for for sure. Um, I, I'm sort of partial to Maui, but uh, something tells me uh, the best studios are on Oahu. So, no, oh. no, but I guess anywhere can be a, a recording studio these days with um advanced technologies yeah. and equipments we have. I, I used to do a, a summer guitar festival um, when I was a student with uh, Ben Verdery there, mm. who was my teacher at Yale. And uh, it was in Maui. It was a couple of weeks. And uh, we did a concert in, in a place called Hana, which, you know, if you know the road to Hana, if you know all that, it's like a really windy road, like the kind where it's mm. like, it's one lane and they have all sorts of rules for like, if you run into somebody going the other way and mm -hmm. all of that. But uh, yeah, George Harrison had a house there, things that it was really secluded, but we played in this church. Mm -hmm. And while we were playing, you could hear waves crashing on the beach in the background. And it, it sounded almost like one of those, like, you know, guitar music for relaxation things oh. that you would buy where it's like guitar and like, whoosh, you know, and you're playing and, and Ben said, uh, he goes, man, I want to record a, a CD in this church and call it Bach to Maui. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we all just went. Bach to Maui. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll rent that church in Hana and uh, we'll have, you know, whale sounds and, you know. Dolphins and. Dolphins and you know, <laughs> waves crashing on a white sand beach in the background. Yeah. We have yeah. to have a, a completely different uh, program for that then. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not going to be, uh, yeah, arpeggione, that's for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's, yeah, yeah gu guitar and saxophone music to meditate to or something. Mm, or yoga or something yoga, like that. Yoga, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We joke, but that would probably sell. Yeah, and we're going to have a, a music video just like how we did with uh, Spanish music and <laughs> that might yep. work. We'll bring a drone to to Maui. It'll be great. But, yeah, yeah. I'm not shooting during the day though. That the sun is brutal. Oh my gosh, that's right. So we have to wake up early in the morning and get the sunrise. And the <sighs> <laughs> I I prefer sunset shoots myself. Um, yeah, that last sunrise shoot we did in. Mallorca, right? Yeah, that was fun though. We, we got up, we got up at three in the morning, four in the morning. So yeah, it was still dark. Crazy like that. Ugh. Yeah, no, that yeah. was brutal. And we drove for about maybe forty minutes, forty-five minutes, and then to hiked, get to and that. hiked another twenty or thirty. Yeah, 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 yeah. With gear and the whole bit. Yeah, we worked for that video, so everybody better watch it and like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's no green screen. That's that's real. That's really that's, real. That's real, real. That's us mm -hmm. working really hard to to get yeah. that there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, gosh, we've got two minutes left here. Oh. Um, so we're we're going to be back next week, and um, we're we're talking about uh, changing some things up here. Um, in future shows and and inviting some guests and we're we're not going to reveal who we've been uh, talking about but uh, don't be surprised if you come back next week and see a, a third or a fourth uh, face on the screen here yeah yeah and um, you know I, I think it'll add a an interesting dimension to this Cheek and I will you know I don't know if we'll have a conversation a roundtable or we'll just you know be interviewers who knows. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't want to be too too strict. We're classically trained in music, but we're more <laughs> jazz here. Good, good, yeah. That's so, a good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I, you know, definitely. This, this is more, uh, you know, improv than Shakespeare. Mm, yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm really excited to be bringing in um, a, a guest here and. Yeah, look forward to hearing what they've been up to and how they're dealing with this world today. So yeah, <laughs> this world indeed. Um, yeah, twenty twenty twenty. Uh, it's almost over. Um, that that's basically the way I'm looking at it. Yeah. So 
Oh, 2021. Yeah. I'm, I'm being optimistic. Yeah. Japan is still talking about Olympics next year. I heard. So, I heard. Yeah. I heard. We shall see. Oh, man. Well, yeah. you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully that uh, yeah, is done safely. Right. And Spain needs to happen in 2021. Spain needs to get happen. Over, yeah, we better get over to Spain. I yeah. I, I just signed some contracts. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, this this week. So yeah, we'll see. All right, Thank everybody. You. It is the top of the hour here, wow. and uh, wow, that went by really fast. Hmm. Huh, what do you know? And, and thank you, everybody, for your comments and questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's a lot of fun. You know, when you guys are you know really you know you know, weighing in on stuff that that's, uh, that's great. I'm, I'm sick of hearing me talk and I'm definitely sick of, uh, now, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, we're sick of talking to each other. We want to talk to you guys that that's, that's the deal right there. So yeah, we had fun. Uh, you know, thank you so much. Oh, Zach's here. I didn't know. He didn't say a word. Oh. Um, yeah. Well, next time, Zach, you know, mm -hmm. Maybe we'll interview Zach next week. Yeah, maybe so. It'll be yeah. fun. We'll talk about Alice in Chains tribute bands and stuff. That'll be cool. Um, all right, everybody. I okay. am out. Uh, but we'll be back here next week for sure. And okay. uh, we'll 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 make it fun. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye. Okay. Bye everybody. <laughs>